In the last video, we had a make plane function. We called that make plane function right here and replaced our cubes with planes. And so when we fly around, we can see that our two instance cubes are now planes. Between the last video and this video, I did a hideous amount of work. And I made a make teapot function, which I will replace our cubes with make teapot. And control F5, build this, run this. The same transformations are applied to the two instanced teapots that were applied to our cube and so you can see these kind of rotated floating hanging out teapots hopefully you think that's really cool I think it's cool I think it's a lot of fun make teapot also takes a tessellation value which like make plane is sort of like a, a dimensions value the higher the tessellation the higher the quality of the teapot but then of course the more vertices we have to render the more drawing we have to do you can see that my just hit control of five and the algorithm looks like it actually exploded. <laughs> Maybe 100 is a bad value. I don't know. Let's try 20. Maybe we'll get luckier with 20. I haven't really gone higher than 10. Eh, 20 doesn't look that bad. But neither did 10. 10 didn't look that bad either. Let's try something simple like 3. I bet we get a really ugly looking teapot with very low. Well, actually, that's not bad. You could imagine that kind of quality inside of a game. You know, I'm, I'm curious what happens if I do one. I've never tried one. I'll try one and, wow, that is one ugly teapot. Now, let me tell you something about this teapot. I did not write the code to make a teapot. In fact, here is the credits. Copyright Mark J. Kilgard back in 1994. All rights reserved. All this stuff's important. Permission used, copy, modify this software for any purpose without fee is hereby granted, provided that this copyright notice appear in all copies. Blah, blah, blah. Read all this. Credit to them. They did it, not me. Uh, let me let me actually show you kind of what's in here. Uh, here's, here's a bunch of base data they use for the teapot. And then going back to Shape Generator, I did adapt their code to fall into my Shape Generator here. I call make teapot down here, but then all of their helper code, I also copied and pasted into shape generator as well. I had to do a lot of modifications here uh, to, to adapt what they've done to what I'm trying to do. But basically here is all of their code. Let's see, they got move lid, generate patches. You can see this is, this is pretty, pretty complex math they're doing here. I just want to move lid, I can move the lid off the teapot, pass in a lid transform, it's a matrix for uh, build patch, build patch reflex again all this code is not mine it is credit due to Mark J. Kilgard I got it off a book I've been using to study OpenGL, let me show you right here this is the book I pulled this code from, OpenGL 4.0 shading language cookbook I believe there's a second edition out actually but this I've, I've learned a good amount of OpenGL from that and some other resources but there you go I have given credit where credits due maybe I should put this uh, adaptation up on my website so you can use it anyway ugly teapots and uh, let me I want to brag though let's talk about the U it's called the Utah teapot with computer graphics it's one of the more complex objects that were originally available. It's called the Utah Teapot, which gives me pride because I live in Utah. I live in the heart of Utah, Salt Lake City. Uh, Utah Teapot. Let's look at the Wikipedia article I was reading up on this. The Utah Teapot, or Null Teapot 3D computer model, which has become a standard reference object in the computer graphics community. If you go to any graphics, uh, seminars, graphics, get together as graphics anything the teapot always comes up in fact sometimes they give away models of the teapot the teapot is a mathematical model of an ordinary teapot of fairly simple shape what's appeared solid cylindrical partially convex thus it's a good teapot it's got this hole in here it's got this saddle right here uh, I think let's go oh there's the original Utah teapot that's the original Utah Teapot. Newell needed a moderately simple mathematical model of a familiar object for his work. His wife, Sandra Newell, suggested modeling their tea service since they were sitting down to tea at the time. He got some graph paper and a pencil and sketched the entire teapot by eye. Then he went back to the lab, edited the bezier, 
control points. Learn about Bezier curves later on. Blah, blah, blah. Teapot shape contains a number of elements that made it ideal for graphics experiments of the time. It is round. Contains solid saddle points. Has a genus greater than zero because of the hole in the handle. And can project a shadow on itself. That's really cool. Project a shadow on itself. We'll get into shadows a little bit later in this playlist. Looks reasonable when displayed without a complex surface texture. Although technical progress has meant that the act of rendering the teapot is no longer the challenge it was in 1975, that's pre-birthday for me, the teapot continued to be used as a reference object for increasingly advanced graphic techniques over the following decades, editions of computer journals, blah, 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 blah. These are famous people in computer science. Newell, Jim Blinn, Jim Blinn has a number of cool books. Go look at his books. This all happened in Utah. Right where I live, in fact, let's go a little bit further. The original physical teapot was purchased from ZCMI, a department store in Salt Lake City. Growing up, ZCMI is where my mother would purchase all my clothes. There was one at the mall. There was All the malls had a ZCMI. I think they went out of business, though. Anyway, that was our local retail store, kind of like Kohl's would be today, or uh, Macy's, maybe. ZCMI was comparable to Macy's. Uh, the teapot was donated to the, to the Boston Computer Museum. But there's also one other bragging point I want to show here University of Utah all oh, right back at the top here the teapot model was created in 1975 by early computer graphics researcher Martin Noel. we already talked about that a member of pioneering graphics at the University of Utah if you've done any extensive graphics study or research the University of Utah was a huge pioneer in the area of computer graphics let me brag even further I'll go to LinkedIn Here's me. Let's go down to my education. I know my education is down here. Uh, why, you know, why, why does LinkedIn put the education at the bottom? I don't know. But look at that, my master's degree. I earned it from the University of Utah in their game engineering department. Took several of their graphics courses while up there. And graphics is still strong at the University of Utah. But it would have been cool back in the day when these guys were doing their original research at the University of Utah to be at the University of Utah and be a part of that. Oh, well, it all, a lot of it happened while I was just a wee tyke, and so I wasn't even aware of it. But there you go. We now have a Utah teapot. We can fly around. We can look at it. That's just ugly. Let's, let's uh, bump the tessellation up to 10. Get a nice-looking teapot here. Thank you for all that code. And there you go, teapot. Now, in the next videos, we're going to set up an interesting scene. We're going to light the scene. I think before that, though, we should talk about culling because... I can fly inside this teapot, and uh, which is kind of cool, but generally, unless your game has a bug, you're not flying inside of things. And so uh, we should talk about that and talk about culling your triangles.